I think I finally understand what drew me to Mass Effect 1, how this game makes me feel and how it makes it my favourite Mass Effect game to date. In compiling my two secret list videos so far for the Mass Effect trilogy, I found myself pondering a little bit more over what made Mass Effect Andromeda a game focused on exploring uncharted worlds in a new galaxy not quite click for me when Mass Effect 1 appears to offer a similar concept. And the truth is it does boil down to a simple point, space exploration games aren't really my favourite genre, and I've certainly got concerns for Bethesda Game Studios' upcoming Starfield, not because they have a touch and go relationship with quality, well yes that, but also primarily it's the genre. I think it's incredibly difficult to find the sweet spot, and to me this is a genre that needs to strike a sweet spot, and in my eyes no game has done that quite as well as Mass Effect 1 for space exploration. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean every game that could hit this sweet spot needs to be the exact same, a carbon copy of one another game after game, whether in the same franchise or just a different game that falls under this category, that'd just be no different from modern AAA games. I find that titles in the science fiction slash science fantasy genre across the spectrum of mediums of entertainment often struggle to distinguish themselves in the department of individuality. It's a section of movies, TV shows, books and video games where the old reliables will always come to mind first and typically reign supreme. Whereas plenty of new attempts at capturing the magic of galactic exploration will simply go forgotten. For such a curious idea, one that's played on the minds of humanity for a long time, the question of what could be out there often doesn't get entertained in entertainment mediums quite as satisfyingly as you'd hope. Why is this? Well. If you were to compare, say, Star Wars or Star Trek to a new franchise like Starfield that we know nothing about, the differing medium of movies and TV shows to video games is not lost on me, don't worry. The former are pre-established universes with decades of world building and lore that allow you to immerse yourself in those experience easier because you know there's something actually out there and the new release of something within that franchise doesn't need to provide anywhere near as much legwork and context to establish this as a new franchise might. And space is the ultimate nothingness, the absolute pinnacle of negative space, and there's either something or there isn't. It sometimes contradicts entertainment to provide a realistic expression of what's out there. This leads to two key routes products in this genre take. The Star Wars route, where it has space elements but it isn't sci-fi remotely, and every planet is inhabited by something and it isn't about exploration, but certainly makes for entertaining fantasy effectively the space opera route, and then you have the space exploration route, as seen in many video games such as No Man's Sky and others where there's plenty of nothing but not enough of something if that makes sense, to varying degrees showing the vastness of space, arguably to a more realistic degree than space operas and whether or not that makes for good entertainment is subjective to the consumer. Apples and oranges I know, but this isn't a comparison of sorts but rather an overgeneralization of the spacefaring genre of entertainment to suit my point when I get more specific. Before I get ahead of myself and cast some ridiculously wide net before I've even got to my point, let's find our way back to how all this applies to Mass Effect 1. Well, Mass Effect 1 is the pilot title to a pseudo-scientific story in which humanity has risen to join the galactic community due to discovering the fictional scientific concept of Mass Effect. Mass Effect takes inspiration from across the sci-fi genre, from Knights of the Old Republic to Alien to Star Trek, Deus Ex, Blade Runner and beyond. While there is a bit of pre-establishment of humanity in the galaxy, we're only 20 years into that, so we're entering this universe pretty fresh. As in, while we're experiencing the vastness of the galaxy now opened up to us, so are the human characters in the game. It's immediately compelling when combined with the fact that the game wastes no time beginning to establish characters' lore and history. And of course, Keith David. After the opening combat segment, we're introduced to the main establishment of the galaxy, the Citadel, and to me this is the moment in Mass Effect 1 where I knew this game had me in for the long haul. Exploring the atmosphere of this place compared to the desolation of Eden Prime before it in wake of the mysterious Geth attack had me enthralled. Now I got to spend hours soaking in the cultures of the galaxy that culminated into one layered location, exploring the wards, the Presidium, the portrayal of different races and mentions of historical events and the attitude of the individuals who inhabited this space. Mass Effect 1 quickly offers the lived-in feeling you want from a game or any form of fictional entertainment that tackles the subject of the vastness of space, 
in a futuristic setting because it's wondrous, a galactic society spanning from solar system to solar system, moons to planets, space stations to spaceships, it's surreal. A concept that blends society on Earth with the societies of other fictional sentient species from across the galaxy and shows that coexistence, the good and the bad. Mass Effect is aware of its newness and works immediately to establish a layered deep lore that gives you an entry point to the overall universe. Humanity are relative newcomers on the galactic scene, we are newcomers to the world so some of the blanks don't need filling right away to keep us hooked, because in a somewhat contained fashion we're already relating to the game's depiction of humanity. This is somewhat of an open experience and you can take off aboard your ship, the Normandy, surrounded by your crew from various backgrounds, interact with said crew aboard your ship and then go on adventures across the Milky Way. Sometimes this takes you to very much so inhabited lived in worlds and places with stories to tell of their own, but Mass Effect 1's master stroke in this department came from the planets you could visit that didn't tick these boxes. Emptiness. There are plenty of planets and moons in Mass Effect on which nothing is going on. Sure, there's always at least something to do to validate being on the planet within the confines of simple mechanics and the odd side quest, but besides that, some of these planets are lifeless, uninhabited world spaces and yet they still have tremendous character and that only adds to the game's own charm. Whether it be an icy planet, a rocky one, or one overpoweringly lit by a nearby star, the worlds that provide this feeling of loneliness best are the ones that typically don't host any form of life to remind you of just how big the galaxy is, and that makes it quite terrifying. Mass Effect 1 balances this warm fuzzy feeling of immersion you get when exploring the Citadel, interacting with different characters and seeing the changes to human life along with the things that have remained relatively similar, with the concept of the galaxy and by extension the universe being a dark, cold and empty place portrayed through the ability to visit seemingly barren worlds where the most interesting thing you'll do is take in the horizon. Being on these relatively empty celestial bodies is a terrifying feeling, maybe the most terrifying one of all is Earth's very own moon. Seeing Earth in the sky, a small marble against the dark massive backdrop of space sends chills down my spine. The empty sounds of the moon add to this ego-damaging feeling of personal insignificance in the grand scheme of the universe and by extension the greater insignificance of all we know and all we will ever know. It's a petrifying thought to recognise that there is a scale to which our actions, who we are and what we choose to do will never matter. And while it is terrifying, it can also be simultaneously relieving. When on more alien planets in different solar systems, we're reminded of this, but with less familiarity. Most solar systems we can visit have at least one planet we can land on. They may not be unique or have much going on for us to explore, but at the same time, the game never offers much reason for us to land there if we don't want to. It's purely for the completionist. Many planets have stars, moons and other planets visible from their surface, and more often than not are devoid of any form of life. This is the vast majority of space in Mass Effect knows that. It's not like Star Wars where every planet is cosily inhabited complete with a breathable atmosphere. Mass Effect has that dense, immersive, lived-in galaxy, but when you're out here on some forgotten planet with limited activities and no sign of life anywhere, you can't help but feel alone. I don't think these spaces are bad at all. From a gameplay perspective, it does seem pretty boring, as many will jump to point out. You're right, there's not really that much to do with regards to exploring these worlds. There are little things you can do, and of course you can drive the Mako, which is just everybody's favourite activity. But it doesn't seem to be the point in the first place. What I think the point of these uninhabited worlds is, does land, however. Before we get to that, I'll explain where I feel Andromeda falters. Mass Effect Andromeda sees various races from the Milky Way venture forth on a one-way trip to the Andromeda galaxy, leaving behind everything we knew. No comforts, be it the human home or the homely feeling of the Citadel and its various cultural influences from across the galaxy after playing the trilogy or anything in between. All of that gets left behind by the limited people in the Andromeda Initiative. Our mission? To settle a new home on a new world in a new galaxy millions of light years away. However, as it turns out, we've arrived a little late and everywhere in the limited helium 
previous cluster has to a degree been charted, explored, and to varying degrees, with far too many habitable planets for such a small region to kill any sense of realism that the trilogy may have possessed in spite of its pseudo-scientific premise. The Milky Way races have established homes already, albeit very slapdash. That sense of exploration that we, the Pathfinder, should be having is gone before we ever have the chance to even feel it. The game does break this mould more than once, however for the most part there's already something familiar there, so there's no point. Above all else, there's no nothingness to make you feel that discomfort, like when you're sat on a planet light years away from anybody in Mass Effect 1. This always felt counter to the initial premise of Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda provides a diluted exploration system in which nothing really feels like a new experience for humanity as such a venture should promise, and Mass Effect 1 isn't really about exploration. These empty worlds dotted across the Milky Way aren't truly meant to be explored, and whilst you do have some interactive sites on these planets, and side missions that may take you to them or revolve around them on occasion, they're very minimal. The intent behind these worlds was simply to be felt. This is how big the galaxy is, and this is how small you are. I like to think this is a theme in the Mass Effect trilogy, we're faced with the threat of the Reapers, a species of synthetic machines with goals beyond our comprehension that emerge from dark space every 50,000 years to destroy all of face-sparing civilization. We are small to these behemoths, insignificant, inconsequential, they have no sympathy for us, they don't take pity, we are ants to them, just like we are ants to the universe, if not less. Mass Effect 1 lays down this principle. We get to soak in the lore before being unleashed on the galaxy to explore at our own pace. Visiting these places certainly feels like a must to take in the overall atmosphere of the game. Whether or not we take the time to take in the petrifying reality of our existence is up to us. The game doesn't force us to spend endless time exploring barren worlds. We have to make the choice to find a lot of these worlds and decide how long we want to stay, and we can leave at any time by simply pressing a button and returning to the comfort of the Normandy. This duality of the endless emptiness of space versus the atmosphere of mixing with galactic society is explored greater in this game than even the following two entries to the trilogy, and this isn't a knock to Mass Effect 2 and 3, as it certainly makes more sense for those games to be a little more focused on the threat and the lives being threatened, but it makes me glad Mass Effect 1 does take the time to provide this message. For Mass Effect's story to really hit home, I feel you need to feel your own insignificance. In reality, that significance is lesser than that of humanity in the games, we're still confined to one tiny rock floating through the endless nothingness that is space, unable to leave. If any other life is out there, we cannot interact with it, and yet maybe we never will. We are a speck of dust in the cosmos and our existence holds no bearing over anything. Our lives are but a second in endless time. All we know is here, but all we know will one day no longer exist and leave behind no evidence that it ever did. It's a cold, terrifying feeling to be so redundant no matter what you do or don't do, and the Mass Effect trilogy story off the back of this hits home even harder. We aren't the first society to be threatened by the Reapers, we aren't even the tenth or the hundredth. This cycle has repeated for millions of years. While Mass Effect fills us with its lore, the narrative's context and gives us the opportunity to gaze upon the horizon on lifeless planets, we form a greater understanding of just how minuscule Commander Shepard's odds are at defeating the Reapers and saving all any of the characters in these games have ever known. Mass Effect is one of the few space opera style experiences, if that's the correct way to describe it, that actually provides a sense of scale. And so I finally understand what makes Mass Effect 1 stand out, even amongst the Mass Effect games, but more broadly amongst sci-fi space adventure games. It offers both reality and fiction. The reality is no matter what's out there, the universe is defined by its emptiness. But when we're immersed in all of the information this game gives us about the lore, the cultures of galactic society, the characters, places, the history, we don't feel that emptiness. But yet we can always go out into the galaxy, find an empty world, land, and come to terms with our own unimportance. In reality, we on Earth can't bring ourselves to fathom just how empty the universe is truly because all we've ever known is our lives and the world that enables us to live. Our technology can't take us as individuals somewhere to really appreciate how dead the broader universe is. We have no reason to feel that truth. 
even if aliens are out there somewhere, the universe is lifeless and we are the outliers. This is what a game like Mass Effect Andromeda needed to show us, both sides to the equation. The feeling of being lost in space, light years from anybody, just pondering over the horizon on a world in which nothing is actually happening and also tether us to lore, not piggyback off the trilogy as it's been left behind, never to be seen again, no longer a comfort. Andromeda needed to provide new comforts that fit its narrative and then actually give us the exploration aspect in a way that didn't sacrifice the feeling you get when simply traversing across unfamiliar terrain on a lifeless planet. The duality of deep immersive lore and the bleak realistic emptiness of space is undoubtedly what drew me to Mass Effect 1 in the first place. It may not be what sold me on playing the game, but it's what kept me interested. Mass Effect is a trilogy of games in which I could feel the depth surround me at every turn, but also feel the fear of isolation in equal measure. I don't know if it was intended, but it sets the Mass Effect games apart in a way that shouldn't be unique but is. The games aren't intending to be realistic in concept, but how it makes us feel as humans, people with egos, whether we like to admit it or not, was very real. And that's as raw as it gets. For a new franchise to quickly touch all bases firmly and provide the perfect atmosphere to carry over into its sequels, Mass Effect 2 and 3, which may not have needed the same degree of just experiencing the nothingness of space because they didn't need it. Because the premise had already been explored, it had already been felt and no matter what we are doing or where we are in the games that followed, it's always in the back of our minds. This is why Mass Effect 1 in hindsight has become my favourite Mass Effect game. For the longest time it was Mass Effect 2 and I left it at that but since the Legendary Edition fixed the visual aspect to 1 to an acceptable degree my imagination simply became much more enthralled by how Mass Effect presents itself and how it sets a strong basis for the entire franchise to come. And that right there is something that I have recently come to understand about Mass Effect 1, just how terrifying it is and how brilliant that makes it.